All right, thanks so much for that great presentation, Rachel. My name is Lisa, you can't see me, I'm on the side, but these are our um, students who are current Georgia Southern students, and they're here to answer your questions as well and share more about their experience as students. So I'm gonna let them um, introduce themselves and share a little bit about themselves, and if you have any questions for them, please feel free to go ahead and start typing those in. All right, uh, hey guys, my name is Errol Spence. I'm a junior political science major from Swan, Georgia. I guess my favorite thing about uh, being at Georgia Southern would probably be being an Eagle. I know it's kind of simple, but an Eagle is my favorite mascot, so it's great to identify <laughs> with an Eagle every day. Go Eagles. <laughs> hey y'all, my name is Carrie West. I'm a junior early childhood education major from Douglasville, Georgia. And I think one of my favorite things about Georgia Southern is the going to the football games and just seeing everyone so excited to cheer on our Eagles that Errol loves so much. <laughs> and hi everybody, I'm Micah Mills. I'm a freshman mechanical engineering major, and I guess my favorite thing about Georgia Southern is um, all the clubs and organizations we have. Awesome. Thanks for sharing all that, guys. Um, if anybody watching has any questions, feel free to go ahead and start typing those in. Um, what kind of clubs and organizations are you involved in? Okay, I guess I'll take a start on. The one that I'm mainly involved in right now is Student Government Association. Uh, we're the student governing body for the university, so it's a pleasure to be able to represent the school. Uh, I didn't know what to expect when I first got here and I joined student government, but uh, we take a lot of pride in that, and as with every organization, so uh, student government is what I hear we call it a tier three organization, but even the tier two and tier one student organizations, they take a lot of pride in what they do as well. So uh, like Michael was saying, we have a ton of organizations, but each one is unique uh, in their own way, and I think there's a fit for every student. Uh, who wants to come to Georgia Southern and find a place? So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm involved with a program called Alternative Rate Trips, and it's um, through our leadership office, and I'm on the board of students that plans these trips that go out every winter, spring, and May break, and basically they're service trips that go out all over the southeast, and we take a few international trips. And they're all based on different social issues. So it could be education or the environment or disaster relief, whatever the students are interested in. And they can go on these trips for a week all over the country and internationally. And um, there's a group of students that plan those trips. And so I'm part of that. OK, well, I guess I'm last. And um, the reason I said this is because I joined too many when I first got here because there were so many things to do. But um, first off, I was in um, archery club and rock wall climbing club, and I, I've narrowed it down now, but um, uh, currently I'm in the uh, Residence Hall Association, and I'm the vice president for Centennial Place, which is one of the dorms on campus, and we get to advocate for um, the students who are in those halls and um, what they want to do in different programs and stuff they want to do, like we put on events every once in a while. And um, also, I'm in um, several Christian organizations that are on campus. We have a ton of um, different religious affiliated organizations, um, for no matter what your religion is. And um, it's been really cool to get connected with people through those. Um, here's a question. What was your roommate situation like as a freshman? Did you know your roommate, or was it somebody randomly assigned? And how did that go? Anyone can share. <laughs> okay. Well, I am a freshman. Um, so the year's not over yet, but um, in Centennial Place, I'm in one of the um, uh, the four bedroom apartments, and so I have three roommates. And um, I was really, really nervous about it, but um, they're all really good guys, and so it was it was cool that um, I hadn't met any of them before I got here, but. Um, Right off the bat, we struck up some chemistry and we're, we all like each other. And um, the hardest part is getting people to clean up um, what they want, what they uh, leave around. But um, it's really easy. You start, you sign a roommate contract at the beginning of the year. So if there are any issues and if you do come up with anything, then you just talk to your community leader, which is um, a C out, sort of like an RA here. Um, and their job is to basically um, create a community in your hall and um, get you to um, sort of come out of your room every once in a while and do the stuff that people want at home. So I had a good experience. Anyone else want to share about the roommate experience? Well, good or interesting? I, I lived in Eagle Village my freshman year about two or three years ago. I still remember that experience because it was a good one. 
uh, Eagle Village was my residence hall, so I enjoyed it. I loved it. That's all I had to look up to. Um, it was great time to be social. Like we left our doors open. Like there was no concern about like safety or like you know anything like that. We were just really comfortable. It was a great community feel we had in Eagle Village and uh, along our hallways. As far as as far as my roommates were concerned, like I was so excited about coming to college that I wasn't worried about any roommates issues or anything like that. And when I got here, like it just all flowed seamlessly. It really is that large scale, small feel, and uh, we're all here to like accomplish a goal. So there were little nitpicky things like you have to learn to live with others and like you know be respectful. But it's just those little things that you you're not used to because you live with your family, these people that you know so well for your whole life, and now you have to come and adjust. But it's a great. Uh, I think Georgia Southern is a great place for you to do that adjusting. So I had a great experience my freshman year with roommates. Well, my experience is very similar to Micah's is that I lived in a four-bedroom at Centennial Place as well. Um, the, there's kind of two halves, and then the living room and um, the kitchen area are in the middle. And so me and my best friend from high school lived on one side, and then we had two girls that we didn't know before live on the other side. Um, and we got to know one of them really well. And the other one, we had a few little hiccups with. Um, but like Micah mentioned, we have these community leaders that are upperclassmen that live on each floor. There's probably several on each floor mm -hmm, with the freshmen. And so their, he said their main job is to kind of build community, but it's also to be there to support the freshmen if they have issues with living with people and stuff. And so we could go to him and he could help us kind of facilitate this discussion that we needed to have with our other roommates. So um, it ended pretty well because of that. Awesome. All right, let's see. I think we have some questions here. Okay, Betty asks, are there a lot of things to do outside of campus? Mm -hmm. Who wants to go? <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll talk about it. I I know there's Savannah. I know a lot of people go and visit Savannah. I know the fair is here right now. Uh, we have a mall that you can go shop at. There's a lot of places to eat. Uh, I, I'm really involved on campus, so it's, it's really hard to talk about what happens off campus because I put so much of my energy and time on campus, and Georgia Southern is really, like, to me, the heart of Statesboro. So this is, like, where I stay on campus and where I, you know, where I'm most invested in. So I can't really talk about uh, as much as there to do off campus, but I know there's a lot to do on campus. Um, when I think of off campus, I just think of the Statesboro community, and there's a lot of ways to get involved volunteering and different ways to do community service in Statesboro. Um, we have, there's different um, organizations like the Boys and Girls Club and Habitat for Humanity that really a lot of times rely on volunteers and a lot of their volunteers are Georgia Southern students. And so if you are really interested in volunteering or in leadership and things like that, um, you can, you know, coach a youth soccer team at the rec department or, you know, go volunteer your time at the Boys and Girls Club because they really love to see Georgia Southern students getting involved in campus, I mean, in the community. Um, I'll agree with both of them have already said. I mean, I rarely ever leave campus except for like on the weekends to go home and stuff to see my parents every once in a while. But um, when I there's also downtown. We have a pretty cool downtown. It's um, it's a rustic, cool downtown. And we have a comic book store. If you're interested in comics, we have a really good um, music store called Plaid Dot. And um, there's a ton of great places to eat. Um, but a lot of things happen right here on campus, and there's always something going on if you're um, bored and if you don't need to study. And there's always something that you can be doing on campus. There's always events going on. So, Awesome. All right. Toland asks, um, does Georgia Southern offer a pharmacy program? Can. Yeah. Uh -huh. Of course. Okay. I don't know that. I don't know. All right. We actually... Um, um, like like she said earlier, um, if you if you want to look at our majors and stuff, you can go on to the Georgia Southern website and look at the majors and stuff and they're listed. Okay, and we do also have a pre pharmacy program. So if you want to enroll in that, a lot of students will choose to do that and then go on to pharmacy school after that. They would major in a science like biology. Most most students would major in biology or chemistry and then go on to pharmacy. Cool. All right. <laughs> All right, here's another question. Um, what kind of leadership opportunities have you seen? Mm -hmm. 
We we are pretty involved students, obviously because we're doing this. But um, immediately as you come on campus, I wasn't thinking about doing too many leadership things on campus. But um, right when I came on, there was an abundance of things that you could join and things you can get involved in and um, show that you're a leader. And we have uh, we have a leadership class that's no credit hours and it doesn't count against your GPA or anything. It's just a class that's held. Um, once a week called Lead 1000 that I'm taking this year. And um, it's pretty cool. It's um, a group of other people who are like minded like me and we get to learn about different ways to be leaders. And um, like, like I said earlier, I'm on um, our RHA and I'm the vice president for our hall council. And how that happened was I don't really know. I made a good flyer and um, it, it, I made a good flyer and I wasn't expecting really to get the position, but I got it and it's been a great experience. Um, and getting to work with these guys and they really build you up and um, we also have um, the Office of Student Leadership and Civic Engagement which does a whole lot of leadership opportunities. I'm wearing a t-shirt right now that says Southern Collegiate Leadership Conference which was a conference that was here on campus um, that the admission was only like $10 and you get a t-shirt and get fed for the day and it was it was a good fun full of workshops and stuff and I believe we hold that every year, don't we? Okay. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, for freshmen, we have a, I know we're talking about the leadership office, but it was a leadership question. Um, but we have a freshman program called BUILD, um, and it's where 60 students can come down. Michael did it this past year, and I am a BUILD alumni as well, and I did the BUILD leader this past summer. But it's where we bring 60 students down about a month before classes, and uh, during, they stay for a week on campus. And during the day, we go out and do community service in Statesboro. Um, and then in the evenings, do some like leadership activities and things like that. And it's a ton of fun. And it's a great way for freshmen to meet 59 other students that are coming onto campus in the fall. And then also, you, like I said, I was a build leader. And so we have build leaders that are upperclassmen to be those mentors to those students as well. Um, this past summer, Errol and I were both also SOAR leaders, which is our orientation that you will go through if you choose to come here. Um, and so that's just another opportunity for students to have, take a leadership role and to learn some professional development um, is to be an orientation leader and to learn so much about Georgia Southern and then to get to show how excited you are for new students to come here over the summer. Yeah, um, so my uh, leadership experience that for one that I'll talk about is from the RAC, uh, our Recreational Activities Center, uh, which is Cambridge Recreation and Rules. And Georgia Southern, with our large scale, like small field type of attitude that we have going on here, if you put that foot forward and make a step, it's like it's hard for somebody not be to grab your hand and like take you and like lead you the entire way. Like, for from my experience working at the RAC, I started as a freshman. Um, they hired me in October and I started school in August. And within that time, I started as a referee. Uh, I got good at what I was doing, and then they asked me to be a supervisor. I was promoted to a supervisor the next year, and I've been a supervisor ever since. And over the time frame of these three years, like, they've given me more responsibilities, and I've learned more. I'm not timid to handle certain situations, so they really like guided me and taught me how to be a good, effective leader. And that's just one aspect, but there's so many other departments and organizations across our campus that will do that for you. And I think they're truly invested in making great leaders out of every single one of us. So. Awesome. All right, here's a question. What do you do if you don't know what you want to major in? And that's a good question. Um, so, Georgia Southern, we do have an undeclared um, option, and so you can come in as a freshman as undeclared. You don't have to label a major yet if you're not sure, and you'll kind of be taken underneath, um, I believe it's the FYE office that handles undeclared mm -hmm. on students, and so that's our first year experience office, and they kind of mentor you and help you take some different tests and things like that for you to figure out what you're interested in and really try to nail down to figure out a major for you. Um, and if you do come in with a major and things like that, you, you can change it. Most students do change it about three times on average in college. Um, but the FYU us, they really want to try to figure, let you figure out a major before your sophomore year um, so that you can start taking those upper level classes. But you do have time because when you get here, you have to take core classes. And so you're taking those as you're trying to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. And um, this semester I'm actually taking an 1102 English class and it's a research-based class where you research into your major and um, so several people in my class are actually in declared majors so how do you research in declared major? 
Well, it's it's been really interesting because they've um, talked to us several times because we, we give little presentations every once in a while. And um, so don't freak out if you're undeclared because um, a lot of times undeclared majors graduate faster than declared majors because um, declared majors will change their major and then um, they have to make up those that they've wasted. So if you're coming in undeclared, don't worry about it. Right. Um. I think being undeclared can sometimes be the best thing because a lot of times you'll come to college just like I did. You have your mind and your heart set on one thing, and you get here and realize it's completely different. I was <laughs> I was a civil engineering major when I first started, and I changed my major within two weeks. Lucky for me, I did it within two weeks, but some people can take a year or two years, and that can really set you back. So being undeclared allows you to open your eyes and expand your options so that you can pick what's really for you and not just what you think you want to be. So. Awesome. All right, another question. Um, how many students stay on campus on weekends? I stay just about every weekend. So, <laughs> um, 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 it's kind of hard to say, like on campus, because um, our freshmen in town, oh, in town, okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. our freshmen are required to live on campus. So I would think most of them do stay on campus for the weekend. Freshmen, I think, go home more than upperclassmen, but <laughs> you'll slowly want to stay more, I think, in Statesboro. As you get more involved, it also makes it a little harder to go home. Um, but you do want to be here. You want to do all these fun activities and things like that. Like homecoming is next week, and so you'll want to be here next weekend for the homecoming game. So, um, I don't really know. I think the more the more you get involved and you're invested, like on campus, like Carrie said, it's really hard for you to leave. Like yeah. I find times when I want to go home and visit, but I can't because I have so much stuff <laughs> yeah. I need to get done here that I want to get done here, and something's always going on. So. Uh, so sometimes it's a lot, sometimes a little. It just depends on what's going on and what you're doing yourself. So, yeah. and um, as a freshman, um, like she said, um, we do have to live in on-campus housing, and so there's always people here on the weekends um, in the housing. Our hall is really connected because we have a really good CL, and all the CLs are really, really good at connecting and making community with them. So um, a lot of times we just hang out in the hallway and do homework together or just watch movies in um, the community room. So if you're staying over on weekends, if you live far away from home, it's not a big deal. You always have people hang out. Cool. Another question. Um, what do you think of the dining halls and the meal plan? What's the food like? I don't know if you guys are doing the uh, meal plan this year, but um, freshmen are required to have um, the on-campus meal plan um, on their, in their freshman year, so freshman class. But, um, uh, but okay, it has been awesome because this year um, they actually built and refurbished the old dining halls, and um, this is the first year that they have the new dining halls, so I get to... Um, uh, be the guinea pig for the new dining halls, and um, we have an eye scanner just for you to get in to both of them, and um, th they are really fantastic. Um, there's a ton of variety of food, and it's buffet style. You scan your eye, you go in, um, you get um, all the food that you want. You can stay there all day and keep eating. You can come in as many times as you want, go out as many times as you want. Um, they they're open from seven o'clock in the morning to eleven at night. And so pretty much any time you want to eat, the, um, the, the bad thing about them is that you need to monitor your eating. <laughs> so um, I had to nail down within the first three weeks that I'm going to eat three meals a day and not five whenever people want to go eat. So, um, but yeah, they're fantastic. And it's, um, you always hear about colleges having gross cafeteria food. Well, this cafeteria food is, is pretty nice. I wasn't expecting it at all. Do you want to share a little bit more about what you mean when you say scan your eye? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, you shoot your laser into your eye, but um, there's a, it takes a yeah, it takes a picture of your eye that when when you first come in on, on student orientation and you get your eagle um, ID, um, they they take a picture of your eyes and it just takes another picture and compares it to it to make sure that it's you. So. So it's just taking pictures. Yeah. It's You're not, not like, getting a laser shot in your eye. <laughs> And you can also just swipe your Eagle ID to yeah, get in as yes. well. Um, I was going to mention that there are two different dining plans. There's an Eagle Unlimited Blue and then an Eagle Unlimited Gold. 
Um, and so the blue is, like Maga just said, it's unlimited access to our dining commons and to Lakeside. Um, and you can go in as many times as you want in a day. Hopefully you won't eat five or more times. I don't know what you need. Um, but, and then what they have is dining dollars, which you can use at different locations around campus, like Chick-fil-A or Einstein's or Market Street Deli. Um, and that's a set dollar amount. I believe it's what? How much? Oh, so. Maybe it's a hundred for the blue, and then the gold has three hundred. Three That's what it is. Um, so then the blue, I mean, the gold has the same unlimited access, and then you have three hundred dining dollars to use at those other locations. And each one also has guest passes. If parents come down or siblings come down for the weekend, they can use those guest passes to get them into those dining locations. Uh, for upperclassmen, we have well, this is probably what most upperclassmen use is Eagle Express because sometimes we're not on campus as much as freshman are because they're required to live off campus. So having you express, which is a tool that I used to use, um, you have your card, your UID, and it, it, so many restaurants and places off campus accept it. So you can go there and like swipe your card and your UID, and then you get a discount. And along with that, you can eat somewhere else with the money that you put on your UID card. So, I mean, it's a great way, uh, another way to eat if you are out of class and you don't find yourself on, on campus as much, so. Can you guys share a little bit about what you did your senior year of high school as you were looking at colleges? When did you start applying? What did that look like for you? I know you all have different stories, different versions of it. So. Could you okay. Okay, well, um, I started applying to colleges um, pretty early. Actually, not, um, I applied to like five different colleges and I went and I visited them all. And, um, and I actually got into every college that I applied to. Um, and actually was considering going to Georgia Tech. And I, I did all the um, I did all the tours and everything, and I went to every one of the colleges. And the first time that I came here and um, was led around, and it, like he said, it's that um, it's small field, but it's a big university. And I, I don't know, I, I I fell in love with it the first time that I came here. And so um, it doesn't matter. Um, there's tons of opportunities here, and the the main thing that you need to be looking for um, when you're looking at colleges is how do you feel when you're on the campus. And um, to me, that was a, that was a big thing. And um, uh, let's see, what was another part of this question? I should answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, when did you apply? You visited? That's good. Yeah. That's when did you start your own Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I all through high school since I was a freshman in high school, I really wanted to go to this small private university um, to play soccer, and I was going to go. And then they moved to D3 and they couldn't give me athletic money. And so I got really nervous. And so it was the summer before my senior year and I had no idea what I was going to do. And my best friend, um, who's my, who was my roommate freshman year and still my roommate today, um, and best friend, by the way, um, but, <laughs> uh, she told me about Georgia Southern and I hadn't really heard very much about it. And so she pulled up on the computer and showed me everything. And so I just automatically applied as soon as I could. I think I got accepted before I had even come down to visit. Um, and then once I came for a visit, I just I didn't apply to anywhere else because I knew this is where I was going to go. Um, President Keel was he was just mentioning kind of find your fit, and President Keel really talks about trying to find your fit on whatever campus that you are. And when I came, I just felt like this was the place. This is where I wanted to be. Um, for the next four years of my life and um, where I can really grow as a person and so I just absolutely fell in love came to open house to show my dad and he fell in love with it and then we came for the scholarship day in the spring and then finally to soar and it was a done deal once I stepped on campus kind of mm -hmm. well uh, my story I'm blessed to be at Georgia Southern because I wanted to move away from home like really bad <laughs> and not because I didn't like my parents or anything I just really like to explore and be on my own and so I applied to all schools like outside, like Clemson and Auburn. And I got into those schools that I wanted to, but when it came down to finances, like I couldn't manage to pay to be out of state. Mm -hmm. And so last minute, I had to look for a school in Georgia that I wanted to go to. And so I, I heard about Georgia Southern, I picked Georgia Southern, and I applied and I got in and I came down here and it was like my first visit, but I was already going to the school. And it was one visit before SOAR. 
And I was like, you know, I hope this works out. And I came, <laughs> I came here and I liked it. But it was like over time, I fell in love with it. And that's why I say I'm, I'm blessed to be in Georgia Southern because I don't know where I'd be right now if it wasn't here or like what I'd be doing or where I'd be at or if I'd had the same experience. So, I mean, it, it's a blessing to be here because I feel like everybody around here cares about you. If you like put that extra effort forward, like nobody's going to leave you out there stranded. Like I said, everybody wants to help you grow here at Georgia Southern. So it's a great place to be. I'm happy to be here. I know a lot of you guys mentioned visiting campus and just a little plug. We do have an open house coming up uh, November 16th. So you can RSVP for that online or you can call our office or email us and we will definitely um, hook you up with some RSVP information and more details about that if you're interested. All right. Um, another question here. Um, can you tell me more about the honors program and our interview involved in that? <laughs> I'm the honors program, and what she was talking about earlier was the Scholars Day. Um, yes, that, that happens the summer before you come, and um, you get interviewed for different scholarships and stuff you want to do, and it, in the honors program and different scholarships within the honors program, and um, I'm actually lucky enough to get to be one of the 1906 scholars, um, which is a four-year full tuition scholarship, and um, and it's through the honors program, and they have a ton of resources. So if you're interested in doing honors, there are a ton of um, opportunities available to you. Um, I, I got a housing stipend, so I'm not paying for housing this year. This year, because of um, Georgia Southern and through the honors college, I'm paying $300 for this semester. So um, it's it's definitely um, a great plus. And not only that, they pay for your um, honors class books. So I'm taking as many honors classes as I can. And um, also the classes are a lot, are, I have like 15 to 20 people in my honors classes versus um, I'm taking um, my chemistry class this year is the only class that's not honors and I have 170 people in there. It's a great professor, but um, it's, I, I don't get to have the one-on-one -on -one that I do in my honors classes. And um, for that, I have to go to his office hours and talk to him, which he's very willing to do. But um, it's great in um, the honor classes being able to have it right there and in class. And um, also, there's a housing community, an honors housing community, um, that I, I'm also um, able to be part of in Centennial Place. So I'm on a hall full of other honors students and people who are like motivated like me. And um, we, we have a blast. So that's all I have to say. I'm not an honor program, but what I would say is <laughs> make, make sure you take advantage and look into those opportunities before you get here because you can still apply once you're here, but I, I didn't apply before and now I'm just, you know, not going to because I'm already here and doing what I'm doing, but I wish that I would have taken advantage of the opportunities. I was just thinking about applying and going to college, but don't stop, like keep going, see whatever else you can get because there's a lot else that Georgia Southern has to offer you in the honors program. I have a ton of friends that are honors students and all they do is speak highly about it. So I really wish I was a part of that program. So as a new student coming in, make sure that you take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, I wasn't going to do it and my mom made me do it. So <laughs> go <laughs> mom. Yeah. Cool. Do any of you guys have jobs on campus? Um, and if so, how does that work? I have two jobs. Uh, I have two jobs. I still maintain a 3.5 GPA um, and I love it. Uh, the, Working on campus is great because the staff here knows your student. They know that school comes first. And so they're very flexible. And that's what I love about working on campus. And also working on campus, they're looking to build leaders out of you. So that's what happens at my job at the RAG. Um, at, well, CRI is what we call it formally. And that's what happens at my job here at Lewis Hall. Like they look to be leaders. And so they hold you accountable. And they want to see you grow uh, into that leader that they know you can be. And so I always say uh, being involved, uh, having your hand in like almost everything that you can do and still manage at the same time is the best way to be successful because you know that oh, I have to go to class, then I have to go to work. So in this time period before class and work, I have to set out this amount of time to hang out and this amount of time to get my work done. So you don't have a lot of idle time to say, oh, I don't know what to do or procrastinate because every time block is designated for something. So it's awesome working here. All those good life skills you're learning. <laughs> yes, yes. And we do, um, we have a student employment center on campus that works through our human resources department. And so any department on campus who needs student employees, 
can post jobs online, and any student um, is who's working or taking a certain number of hours for classes is eligible to apply for those jobs. And then you go through a, a normal interview process, just like you would with any other job. Um, sometimes you have to provide references and stuff like that. Um, but then, you know, as Ariel said, uh, most jobs on campus are going to be really respectful of the fact that you're a student and that your academics comes first. Um, but, you know, working does help provide a little bit of extra money if you need it for fun or to help put yourself through, through school. So there's, there's some great options for that. All right, we have just a few minutes left, so if there's any other questions, feel free to go ahead and type those in. Um, do you guys want to share about some of the concerts or events that have happened on campus? Maybe what's some of the cooler things that you've seen or got to I went to the fray. I, I went to see the fray and the band period perform last year, and that was awesome. It was amazing. Uh, it was the first concert I've ever been to. I haven't really been to any concerts, so but that was awesome, and it was great that Georgia Southern was able to provide that to me for free. So I mean, yeah, it was free. That's one of the big pluses. And we have like little Duval coming here for homecoming next two weeks from now. He's a comedian, and there's also going to be a, another concert coming up in the spring. So there's a lot of entertainment here, and UPB provides free movies. I mean, I'll let somebody else say. Oh, University Program Board. I'm sorry. They provide free movies to us that probably aren't even in Redbox yet. It just came out the movie theaters, so. It's great. Yeah. I think one of my favorite things on campus is getting to go to different guest speakers. Um, they have um, a leadership talk, basically, and um, they get all kinds of different people to come. Soledad O'Brien, um, former Mayor Rudy Giuliani, um, and also former First Lady Laura Bush has come this year. Um, and so not only do our students have the opportunity to attend those events, um, for free and a lot of times they're required for our first year experience classes and different things they can get credit for that but also um, a lot of times the speaker can elect to um, have the option of having dinner with um, students and so students um, oftentimes can write an essay or something like that to um, kind of be put up to have dinner with them and so when I said former first lady um, Marta Bush came um, I actually had dinner with her um, and it was an amazing experience and really a once in a lifetime opportunity that Georgia Southern was able to give me and I just I can't even explain how amazing it was to be able to just sit in the room with her um, and then go and see her lecture and so it's just an amazing experience. Yeah, um, from the freshman's point of view, um, there's, there's always something going on. Um, like he said, we have movies um, every Friday night and um, there are several organizations that um, what they do is make programs for you. You have UPB, and in your actual residence hall, you have your um, RHA and your hall council. And um, what they do is put on programs. Like, um, for instance, tonight we're putting, we're doing it where every Thursday we have a movie night. So Thursdays and Fridays now you have uh, movie nights. But, um, so yeah, tonight um, after this, I'm going to. Um, observe that and make sure that you know nothing goes on but um yeah we're gonna be watching now you see me so yeah. all right betty asked a question are there any well-known or famous people that have graduated from georgia Southern? do you guys know my favorite um well i love to play and my <laughs> most favorite person that graduated from georgia southern is the ceo dan kathy we graduated from here with a business degree and now in our College of Business and Administration um, building, there is a Chick-fil-A room. I've never been in it, but I've talked about it several times. I want to go into it, um, but it's devoted, it's dedicated to him because he did graduate from here. And I believe he spoke at graduation uh, a few years ago. Um, about two years ago. About two years ago. So there you go. He's my viewer. Uh, Luke Bryan, he graduated from here. But I'm actually going to say what I feel about uh, Zaxby's. The founders of Zaxby's graduated from Georgia <laughs> Southern. Competition, yeah, Zaxby's versus yeah, Chick -fil -A. Chick -fil -A. <laughs> And this um this summer during one of my tours for SOAR, I got an opportunity to talk a to talk to a parent who sat in class with the founders of Zaxby's and shame on me for not remembering his name because she told me his name and she said never forget it. So that when I gave the tour and I remember it. But I really don't remember his name. But she gave me a nice <laughs> a nice little spiel about the founders of Zaxby's and I know that they graduated from here and they started their first little chicken spot um, over there by yes, right across from campus. So they used to make chicken, and everybody wanted to know what was in the sauce, and they didn't tell anybody, and now the sauce is a big hit. So. <laughs> big hit, and that's a secret. So, <laughs> that's the only ones I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know there's like several more, but I can't remember. Four years of me. Alright. Well, apparently the CEO of Arby's is also on here. Oh, yeah. right. There you go. CEO's business degree. Make chicken. There you go. Alright, well, for our last question for tonight, I think we'll just say what's your favorite thing about Georgia Southern from this past year? A recent favorite thing, a favorite experience from the last couple of months. Okay. I'll go for it um, RCO is awesome. Okay. And so, uh, actually, was it last night? No, it was the night before last night. Um, he got us a whole bunch of um, long rolls of paper, and we decorated our doors for Halloween. And um, we had a blast uh, hanging out in our hallway, making those. And um, our door is the dust. It's a giant mouth with the eyes on top, so you can turn into a giant mouth. It's pretty cool. Um, but, um, and also, um, like a month ago, we had like a family dinner night um, for our hall, and we um, uh, all got together and made Italian food in the community room. So, um, that's, I guess I would say that's my favorite thing about Georgia Southern, this community, and um, how great the people are here. Gosh, I don't even know how to choose one. It's <laughs> the problem, I think. I mean, I mentioned that I got to have dinner with Laura Bush, and um, doing SOAR this past summer, and I just got rehired as a, what we call a SOAR leader returner, and so that means I get to do it again next summer, and I help get to train the new team, and so I'm really, really excited about that experience, and hopefully meeting a lot of you guys as you come through uh, Georgia Southern class of 18. Sounds really crazy to say, but i um, really excited about that, I think. Well, I mean, like Carrie, there's a plethora of things to choose from. Like, I really don't know which one to choose, but I guess I'll go to the most memorable memorable experience this summer with SOAR. Uh, it, it was just a great experience. It taught me so much. It was demanding and it was rewarding at the same time. And it gave me so much real world experience. And I mean, that's what we all come to college for. So it was great to be able to be a SOAR leader, like one of the most respected roles on this campus and be able to do my job and like do it well. And so, uh, I, I can't say how much uh, being a sort of summer did for me, but it, I mean, hopefully maybe one day you'll learn for yourself what it does. <laughs> so. <laughs> awesome. Are there any other questions out there? Nothing else right now. All right, well, we definitely want to thank you guys for joining in with us and watching and asking questions. Hope you guys have learned some things. Um, if you do have other questions that you think of later, you can always feel free to, maybe I should go in front of the camera. Huh? <laughs> Probably. It's like this random voice. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, if you do have other questions, you can always feel free to call us um, or email us. You can email admissions at georgiasouthern.edu or you can grab our phone number from the website. Um, you can call during our business hours. You can always email back. Um, we are on College Week Live for chats online, not necessarily webcasting, but chats online every Thursday um, until 9 p.m. So you can always hop back on any Thursday and chat with some of our admissions counselors. And we also have current students um, who hang out on there as well, answering your questions. So feel free to stay connected. Um, and we look forward to seeing you here for Open House uh, this fall or maybe next spring and possibly here uh, as freshmen next fall. Thanks. Go Eagles. Go Eagles. <laughs> Bye.